uh, come out with new versions. To upgrade internal software, on-premise software, is a huge problem. Whereas if you're hosted, they upgrade for you and you don't even notice that happened. So that's a big advantage for IT people. And uh, like our CRM is for our salespeople. And our salespeople are all over the world. They don't have to come back to our data center to get information. Uh, the Microsoft CRM online is hosted any, you know, several places in the world and they uh, can get to it from a browser anywhere in the world. The next one, The next one is about collaboration within an organization, which is traditionally called an intranet. intranet. And an intranet is you know, the, the web services available to a company for the employees. And it's composed of you know, three different things. The people, all the people who contribute and then use the intranet. It's the process of governing what goes on the intranet and what are the standards, what are the policies, and how it, it is the basic way that um, management shares information with employees and also employees share information with, with each other. It's sort of social networking within an organization. And the technology usually involves some kind of content management system. We use SharePoint. Um, it has blogs, forums, web parts. Um, and like I said, we use SharePoint, but there are a whole bunch of open source ones that run on Linux. So this is a huge trend, is, is setting up social networking essentially uh, for, for work uh, among the employees. And also, the secondary benefit, like we, we have uh, engineers who work on projects, so we have uh, project management on our internet. So that's just a way for engineers to collaborate with each other on new products. Do we have to finish at 12 or could we? No, no, we can. Okay. Um, the next one, virtualization. This is a huge one. Again, uh, so about the first five of these that I talked about were more like, how does it affect the user? How does it affect the consumer? How does it affect the customer? The rest of these are more like, how does it affect the back office of running IT? Virtualiz virtualization has had a huge impact on IT um, infrastructure. Essentially, it means mapping physical devices to virtual devices, what they call UAV. It means that um, you, uh, you, you, we, we started with about 50 servers, and now we have them virtualized down to about 10 servers, 10 physical servers, and we have about 78 virtual uh, machines running on each of those servers. Uh, you can virtualize not only servers, you can virtualize DRAM, uh, storage, networks. Everything can be virtualized so that if something fails, um, so efficient resource management, reduced footprint, failover. So if you have virtual um, mapping of, say, storage or uh, networks, when one fails, it can automatically fail over to another one that, that's there as a, as a backup or as a load share. Um, because it's not mapped to physical devices anymore, it's mapped to a virtual name of a device. And it's very efficient for, like for example, we have on, on one, let's say, um, server cluster, we can actually move dynamic RAM around if one, uh, one application needs more RAM, because more people are on it, because it's the end of the month and they're running you know, reports, we can uh, dynamically move more RAM to, their, to, to service those customers. So virtualization is having a, a really great impact on both reducing the footprint of servers and also, um, you know, uh, managing the resource of, of servers, networks, and all, all the other uh, sort of data center resources. Next one is cloud backup. This is sort of a newer one. We're just kind of getting into it. Most companies don't do it yet, but it's great for a, a small to medium-sized company. Um, it blurs the line between your backup and your DR. What it means is you're doing this to this backup over the over the internet, over the cloud, to a, a, a cloud service like Amazon, or there's actually companies that just do this, uh, that, that do the just for um, this, this or, or storage backup, like um, Iron Mountain, that, that traditionally did tapes, now they're doing cloud backup um, over the network. And it also offers DR because all your stuff is being stored at a second site now. If something happens to your site, you can, you can come back and you, know, you can restore things pretty quickly because all your data is stored at a second site. And the last one, green IT. I, I see that you guys have a program in sustainable uh, environmental technology. So this is becoming really important because of the, the cost of running IT. Sustainability is important, energy efficiency, uh, consolidation of servers we talked about, and cloud services. So. Um, uh, most of the companies providing cloud services are locating them, in the, you know, in like in the Northwest, where there's, uh, especially Eastern Washington, 
where there's uh, low cost power. So, uh, for example, Microsoft and OS, uh, Intuit and SAVI have all uh, open data centers in central Washington to build large data centers for servers, for cloud servers, uh, because of the low cost of, uh, of energy in, in that region. Also provides great jobs to that area. Okay, so um, talk a little bit about the evolution of computing. Most people don't realize that there was computing before there was the, you know, the personal computer or before there was the iPhone. But really, <laughs> computing goes back to all the way to the 1940s, and there's been like, we're sort of in the fifth generation now of computing. You know, we started with mainframes, and, and IBM was dominant and, and still, is still around. Many computers, Hewlett Packard, Oracle, uh, Hewlett Packard's the only one that's still around. The, well, IBM and Hewlett Packard. In the PC uh, generation, local area networks, Microsoft uh, was dominant in PC makers like Dell. Uh, Gen 4, uh, which is say from the 1990s to early 2000, um, is the, the first generation of internet companies like Google and the stuff that Apple's done. Uh, and then the, the current generation, we'll call Internet 2, is the social networks. Uh, the dominant companies are like Facebook, Twitter, um, these companies. And so what we learned from this, well, first of all, that m most companies don't make the transition very well. The, the only one that's made the transition from all these is, you know, is IBM. Hewlett Packard still around in the fourth, you know, four generation platform, platform changes. Microsoft's still around, but Microsoft has major threats um, because they're still, they haven't really adapted well to Internet 1 or, or Internet 2.0. So um, these platforms, and, and they're accelerating because, you know, uh, Gen 1 lasted 30 years, Gen 2 lasted 20 years, uh, Gen 3 lasted 15 years. So each of these are shorter and shorter periods of, of change and of platform change. And these companies have to be very quick to adapt, otherwise they won't make it to the next generation. So, so I've worked in business, I've worked at Microsoft, I've worked in education, I worked at college, and I've worked um, doing consulting for government in IT, uh, strategic planning. So this is a picture about, okay, technology changes at this exponential rate, but how do organizations adapt to this, and, uh, and what's their rate of adoption of, of new technology? So this is my, my kind of version of it, is that technology changing at this very exponential rate, but uh, you know, even business can only adapt at a much lower rate, education a lower rate, government even, even slower than that. And the ability to, to adapt technology is based on three factors. The first one is what's the competitive landscape? So for, for a lot of education and a lot of government, there's no competitors, you know, like the city of Redmond. <laughs> no competition. Well, yes, competition in the sense that Bellevue can steal some of their companies, but you know, you understand what I'm saying? The citizens have no choice; they have to get service from their from their government. Um, at Bellevue College, we used to think we were like kind of a local uh, monopoly. You know, within 20 miles, you know, most of our students came to us within 20 miles. Well, now in virtual education, online education, all of a sudden there's more competition for students. It, um, another factor is the financial resources. And this is kind of uh, why business can change faster. They have the resources to change faster and to invest in new technologies. And then lastly is the willingness of the employees to change. Um, and this again, you know, business employees are, for survival reasons, they have to change. Education, more competition, uh, and education has to adapt more. Because companies like uh, University of Phoenix are stealing you know, students from traditional uh, educational organizations. And then there's government, which is really slow to change. Because again, they're, they're kind of this monopoly, and they've never had to compete. So they go, well, why should we change? But it's starting to happen. Like, um, you know, what started in, in business 20 years ago, so this, uh, this idea of um, uh, e, uh, I'll call it, uh, so e-commerce started about 20 years ago in business. And then in education, online education started about 10, 10 15 years ago. So this is uh, being able to adapt to the way that people want the, you know, the service. And uh, the biggest trend in government right now is e-government, being able to offer the citizens everything that you can get by going to City Hall, you should really get online. This is only happening right now, whereas it happened you know, 20 years ago in business. So each of these organization sectors uh, adapt differently. 
So what's the impact on IT careers? Well, uh, companies have to focus uh, more on what their core competencies are and outsource everything else. And everything else can include IT, it can include finance, it can include HR, it can include facilities. So um, IT careers are changing. They're not always just within companies, now they're, now they're provided by third parties. Um, so, uh, IT must be business partners first, technologists second. So the question then is, how do you make yourself indispensable? Because you don't want to be outsourced. Um, well, if, you, if you're in a company, you don't want to be outsourced. Uh, but if you're an outsourced, or if you're the outsourced provider, then that's okay. But so things you, you can do, build really strong working relationships with your customers, your internal customers. Learn your business better than anybody else, because people in India and the Philippines, they will never understand your business the way, the way you do. And uh, lastly, you know, support the really essential parts of a company, like the product development, like engineering, like sales, like service. You shouldn't be more than one step away from customers. So then we see either you know, customer service or sales, or providing support to them, or providing the products or services that your company delivers. The closer you can say to your customer, the more essential you are for the organization. Where's the growth in IT careers? Uh, project and program management. If you look uh, online, uh, there's millions of jobs for project and project management. That's a growth, growth area. Uh, and then even within a company, say you outsource a bunch of stuff, uh, you still have to have some, somebody within the company managing the outsourcer, managing the vendor. So there's a big opportunity to manage the service providers from within the company. Uh, then there's the actual companies doing, providing the outsourced service, contractor or outsourced IT. That's probably the fastest growing part of IT, as companies try to just uh, slim down to their core competence and then outsource other things. And then within IT itself, uh, the growth areas are environmental and healthcare. Those are the two big ones that are growing, while the rest of uh, IT is, is switching, mainly from internal to outsource uh, or third party uh, uh, providing. I'm almost done, one or two more slides. Choosing IT career path. Yeah. Well, first of all, I, all IT is, is teamwork. There's no individuals, that, there's very little that gets done, just one person within an organization, IT. Uh, everybody works on, on, on teams. And then you have a choice between individual contributors track or the people track. As an individual contributor, there's technical track or business track. As a people manager, there's departmental managers and then there's project managers. So all of these are kind of different tracks uh, that a person can take depending upon what they like to do and what their skill set is. Education, uh, we like to say that you know education means learning the principles and concepts within, or within a field that don't change over time very much. Whereas training is, and most of the professional certifications are about training, learning about a certain product um, that's very product specific or company specific. Hopefully, uh, in, you know, in higher education, we teach the education, the, the, the principles and concepts. So academic credentials are very important. And then supplementary or complementary to that are professional certifications. Associate degree versus a bachelor's degree. Well, when we sort of first started uh, IT programs at Bellevue College, like in the uh, mid-1990s, uh, there was so much demand for IT workers that uh, associate degree was, was adequate. Then when they went through the bus, the, the IT kind of, uh, in the dot-com bus, all of a sudden they wanted bachelor's degree plus experience. Um, I would say right now, you know, uh, if you, you know, get your associate degree and then, and then have, work for a company and then have them pay for getting your bachelor's degree. Uh, but bachelor's degree is becoming kind of a minimum standard a lot in, in technology careers. And then advanced, uh, advanced degrees in, in fields like software engineering, uh, you know, search engine op optimization, things like that. Big, big data analysis, um, all those are take more advanced degrees. All projects employed, so this is a project that actually I, I was on, uh, it was putting in some new uh, a business development system. And so uh, we had an executive sponsor, we had an engagement manager, we had, and all of these different departments were part of the project. So we had business development, we had sales and marketing, we had engineering, we had legal, we had finance, and we had uh, the IT group. And then we also had outside, an outside uh, organization called Slalom Computing. So 
almost all projects are, are cross-functional across the company. Um, so this is something that's, you know, you have to learn more about you know, how your organization works. But one of the big advantages of IT is being able to see across the organization. It's one of the few parts of the company that actually works with every part of the organization. Uh, user-centric design. So when, so we use this even when we're taking software and software, like we used MSCRM as our base and then customized it to business development. But it still goes through this process of, you know, we did rapid prototyping so that the users could see what they're going to get very, you know, every week. Uh, we use Agile as a design and build strategy, frequent interaction with the stakeholders, and then delivering uh, every week we would have some deliverable that people could use and try out and tell us what they thought. So this is my summary. Um, you know, critical success factors for IT careers, it's not just technology. It's, it's about people, you know, the people in your organization, um, how well they work together. It's about business processes. You can't automate a chaotic process. Um, you'll just create more chaos faster. <laughs> a lot of companies don't understand this. You have to have you know, at least a well-defined, repeatable business practices and hopefully work towards best practices, and then technology aligned with the business processes. Um, and that's, that's all I got. Questions and answers. Internet, 
like like uh, Yelp or um, uh, you know one of, or Twitter, any of those, you probably want to have more than one cloud provider because uh, that is 100%. You know, our business is you know we have an e we have e-commerce on our website, but it's like 20% of our business. If it's 100% of your business, then you should have multi you should have multiple vendors. Uh, vendors. Yep. Uh, yeah, uh, so I wondered if you, you talked about some of the sort of broad career trends. I wondered if you could talk maybe a little bit um, more specifically about people who are transitioning. You know, a lot of students here are looking, if not right now, in the near term and transitioning into um, IT employment and advice that you might give them or, or the key things they should be thinking about now in order to make that transition. Sure, okay, so I assume then you had other careers and now you're making transition to an IT career. So, you know, leverage what you know. Um, if you, and again, like I showed, people, business processes, and technology. You've already worked with people. So, you know, maximize what you've learned about working in groups, working in teams, working <coughs> managing people on projects. Um, you know, leverage the experience you have uh, because that's just as important as whatever technology you're learning. Technology is a tool get things done, but it has to get done through people, it has to get done using business process. All, all a computer system does is automate a, a bit of manual process. And so you already have experience doing two, at least two thirds of those things. You know, you, you had business processes before, you worked with people before on teams. Um, you're, what you're learning is how to apply technology to, to those problems. So again, you know, maximize what your, your skills you already have, and then leverage that into a career. Again, project and program management is probably the biggest growth area because IT is essentially two things. It's maintenance on what's running, and it's projects to develop new stuff. So, and the better you run your your core, you know, your your core uh, technology, the more time and resources you have to do new things. You know. And that's why, that's another big impetus to upgrade and to stay with new technology because nobody wants to be supporting these legacy systems that are really old and don't really match your business process anymore. So, um, yeah. Yes? Uh, what does Microvision do? Uh, we develop uh, uh, what's called Pico projectors, uh, Pico projector uh, technology. So uh, our first generation product was uh, a projector about the size of a cell phone that allows you to do something like this.